Hi everyone and welcome to QBranch's video on chains and belts. This is Burdett and in this video I will be walking you through how to use chains and belts as well as how to calculate the distances needed between the axles. So let's suppose you now have a motor wired up and programmed to go at the push of a button. That's great, but the motor just spins. We want to turn that spinning motion into turning a wheel or moving an arm or something of the like. One way to do that is to directly attach the wheel to the motor but although this results in a very large amount of speed, this also results in basically no torque and your robot's not going to go anywhere. To solve this first issue, we're going to use a gearbox to slow down the output speed as well as increase the output torque. More on how to assemble these later and as well as the calculation of what gear ratios you need, but for now, magic, we've got a gearbox attached. For a drivetrain, we want to power all of the wheels, and for other mechanisms, we may not want the motor and gearbox to be directly at the point of the action. So to transfer the motion, we will need either chain or belt to drive. So for low torque scenarios, we want to use belts. These are very lightweight, but a big drawback is they are purchased with a preset number of teeth. You can't make a single belt longer, but you can string several belts together, kind of like a stepladder if the need arises. Belts also need to be very tight to engage the teeth with the pulley, so any sort of slack is a bit of a concern with those belts. If you know you need to apply a large amount of torque or to stall a motor, you're going to want to go with chain to drive that scenario. The downside of chain is that it's heavy compared to a belt, but the major upsides are the ability to make chain to virtually any length you desire using the right tools and tensioners as well as the torque capabilities. Chain comes in two varieties in FRC, number 25 and number 35 pitch. Number 25 means it has 0.25 inches per link, and number 35 means it has 0.375 inches for every link. Don't ask me why that's the case. But 35 is quite beefy. Use the number 35 only if you are planning on lifting your entire robot using one chain. Otherwise, just use number 25 to save on weight. To transfer power using the belt, you will need pulleys and then the belt. Hex shaft goes to the middle of each pulley, so as one turns, so does the other. Remember to pull tight to engage the teeth, and the distance between the centers of the two pulleys must be calculated using a tool later in this video. To transfer power using a chain, we will use sprockets and then a length of chain to connect them. Number 25 and number 35 chain use different size sprockets but a very important descriptor of the sprockets is the number of teeth. The same goes for the pulleys of the belts. This is discussed later in the video. To determine the space between the centers of the sprockets, we will use what's known as the Botlana Chain Center to Center Distance Calculator. The link is at the bottom of the screen. Here we can input the number of teeth on each sprocket between the, dri the driven and the driving sprockets, as well as the desired center to center distance. The calculator will then give us the number of links needed to complete the assembly. You will need to play back and forth between the two halves of this calculator to try and get as close to either a whole link or half link as possible. Any additional tenths of a link is going to cause a tensioner to come into play. You don't want that. For pulleys, there is the West Coast Products Belt Center to Center Distance Calculator. The link for this website is at the bottom of the screen. Here we will input the number of teeth on each pulley as well as the desired center to center distance. The calculator will then output the number of teeth for a belt shorter than the distance desired distance and then one that's longer. Because the belts come in set manufactured amounts of teeth, there is no option to customize your own belt to your own length. So you're going to need to adjust your center to center distance to accommodate the belts. Finally, a quick lesson on the importance of the number of teeth on your sprocket or pulley. As we transfer motion from one axle to another, we can also change the speeds and the torque of the output. So if the driven sprocket or pulley has more teeth than the driving sprocket or pulley, then for every rotation of the driving axle, there's going to be fewer rotations of the driven axle. This lowers the speed on the output, but it does increase the amount of torque, that is to say the pulling power, and this is a direct ratio. So doubling the number of teeth between the two decreases the speed by two, but also increases the torque by two. 
Keep in mind that the, great, the greater the torque you're asking the driving sprocket to undergo, the greater risk of breaking the teeth on the driving sprocket or pulley, or even snapping the chain. This can cause slipping of belts, shearing of belts, skipping chain, breaking chain. So the greater the torque application, the greater amount of teeth you want on your driving sprocket or pulley to spread out that force amongst more area. Now you can move stuff on your robot. Good luck and thanks for watching.